O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Grant victory to the orthodox Christians over the enemy and by virtue of thy cross preserve thy habitation. Glory to Jesus Christ. This is Father Irenaeus with St. Andrew Orthodox Church here in Liberty Hill, Texas. And thanks for joining us for another video in our series, A Few Minutes of Faith. One of the treasures of the Orthodox Church is the great history that has accumulated over the 2,000 years since the Church was founded. The writings and records of holy men and women from the earliest day exist to inspire and educate us all. I'd like to share one of those anecdotes with you today. The holy monk, Paul the Simple, went to a monastery to visit his brother monks. After speaking of spiritually profitable things, they went to the church to celebrate the divine liturgy and partake of the holy mysteries. Now Paul had been granted by God the gift to see into one's soul. And as he looked at the monks going in, he saw in them a soul full of light, and their guardian angel with them rejoicing. All of them, that is, except for one monk, whose soul was dark. His body was afflicted and beset by demons, and his angel stood afar off. Paul stood outside the church, weeping ceaselessly for this poor monk, and refused to be comforted. When the service ended, Paul, standing outside, saw this same monk. But now his soul was full of light, his body white, and his angel with him, as the demons stood far from him. Paul jumped up, blessing God and crying, Hail to the overflowing mercy of God. For we know from Scripture how great the grace of God is for those who run to Him. The monk Paul saw this in his brother Monk, receiving grace during that one divine liturgy. Wouldn't we all like to receive that grace? Wouldn't we all like to have our darkened soul made white and our demons cast out that we may walk with the angels? But how does that happen? In our first two episodes, we talked about some general issues about the Orthodox Church and the sources of the Orthodox faith, the faith of the Apostles. But now it's time to really start to talk in a little more detail about the faith itself. And to do that, we're going to look at the sacramental theology of the Church. A sacrament is an external means by which grace is imparted to the faithful. But before we can get into that, we need to start with a proper understanding of grace. What do we mean by when we use the word grace? What is grace? Sometimes, grace is used as a way to describe God's overall love, care, and mercy for man, such as in 1 Peter chapter 5, where he speaks of the God of all grace. Or it may refer to the overall work of God in our salvation, as in, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2. But when we talk about the sacraments, we use the word grace in a very specific sense. When we talk about grace in the sacraments, we're talking about the uncreated energies of God. What does that mean? Well, we have to back up a little more even and talk about the nature of God. God, in His essence, is unknowable to man. The essence of what God is is so great, so awesome, so incomprehensible that our human selves, our language, our being, cannot understand it. As we pray in the Divine Liturgy, Thou art God, ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing and eternally the same. The essence of what God is, is simply beyond our limited human reach. It is too great for us, and woe to any of us who think we have reached some elevated level of knowledge that we can understand and describe with human words the essence of God. But that does not mean we have no understanding of God. We know God because He has revealed Himself to us in what the Orthodox call the energies of God. Unlike the essence of God, which is unknowable, the energies are manifest in the world. We understand God through His energies, His interaction with mankind in the created world. 
This insight into his love and care for mankind is communicated through his divine energies. Saint Basil the Great writes that the energies of God come down to us, but the essence remains inaccessible. Building on that, Saint Gregory Palamas reminds us that it is impossible to participate in the essence of God, no matter how holy we may be, but we may participate in the divine energies of God. And this is grace, the deifying divine energies of God which are available to us. This understanding of grace held by the church from antiquity is very different than the modern evangelical view of grace as a singular action in salvation, that upon a declaration of faith one is granted grace and justified for all time. What a sad idea that is, that one needs only a single instance of God's grace in their life, that a single fleeting encounter with the divine energies of God is all you can hope for. But the apostles teach and the Orthodox Church believes that while justification through faith is indeed a great gift from God, salvation is a process, a lifelong process, in which we are in constant need of the support of God's divinely given energies. This is why the Apostle Paul tells the Philippians, who were already converts to the church, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It's hard work to grow closer to God daily, and we need His grace in order to do so. How then does this grace of God act on us as sinful and separated creatures? Well, through cooperation, or in Greek, synergia. Not just by God's gift, but by man's personal efforts to open himself to the saving grace that God offers us. God has never been a God of compulsion. He gave us free will. He asks our cooperation with him. He does not just put out grace where it's unwanted. We must prepare ourselves to accept that grace and receive it. Consider the second epistle of Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter understood grace just as we understand it, as divine energies which we may participate in, we may be partakers of the divine nature, he writes. But what must we do? We must do more than just have faith. We must add to our faith virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, kindness, and charity. Without those, we may be left barren or unfruitful. But with those, we open ourselves up to cooperation with God, to participation in the divine energies. Think about that, brothers and sisters. Just as the monk Paul witnesses so many years ago, we can participate in the very energies of God. He's not remote, uncaring, disconnected. He's not sitting in heaven disinterestedly, seeing how we handle ourselves during our earthly course. He's present, and he invites each of us to be a part of him, to open ourselves in ascent to receiving his grace in us, not one time at an altar call, but regularly as we struggle working out our own salvation with His blessed help, shaking off our demons and enlightening our souls. But how do we receive this grace? By the very things we'll begin talking about in our next episode. God's grace is imparted to us through the sacraments, or as the Orthodox call them, the Holy Mysteries. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 calls the Apostles the stewards of the mysteries of God. This stewardship formed the bulk of the work of the Apostles, celebrating the Eucharist, baptizing those coming into the church, ordaining successors, and this stewardship has been continued by their successors to the present day, so that the mysteries are available to us right here and right now. The holy mysteries are external acts by which grace is invisibly imparted to the believer. Grace works in the faithful through their cooperation, in the church, we teach preparation for each mystery so that the person receiving the sacrament 
may best make use of the grace they receive. God's grace is present in all the sacraments, but it works on each of us differently, depending on our preparation and level of cooperation. That one may receive the sacrament and reap a different benefit, even a lesser benefit than another, does not demean or negate the presence of grace of the mystery. Rather, it speaks to the level of preparation of the recipient. But the availability of that grace and Christ's provision of His Holy Church to impart the mysteries to the faithful speaks to God's boundless love for mankind. And the Church of Christ, the Church of the Apostles, the Orthodox Church, invites you all to experience that love, to be partakers of the divine nature, to receive the grace of God and His divine energies through His holy mysteries. You need only come and see. We welcome visitors who are curious, inquirers who are ready to learn more, and those who are ready to join themselves to the church, because it is in the church that you will find the holy mysteries. They were once entrusted to the apostles and have been faithfully preserved by their successors. Let us therefore, brothers and sisters, commit ourselves to ever greater preparation, adding to our faith the virtues that St. Peter enumerated, that we may receive not just the full measure, but the full benefit of the grace imparted to us through the Holy Mysteries. In our next episode, we'll start talking about the Holy Mysteries one by one. Until that time, may Christ our true God, who entrusted the apostles to be stewards of the mysteries of God, be with you always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Glory to Jesus Christ.